All right, everybody, this is a video on how to actually index a data frame or to grab values from a data frame. Previously, I had done a video on how to create a data frame, uh, relatively simple to do that. But once you create it, you actually want to access things from it, uh, which is quite common. So here, what we're going to do is import pandas and Seaborn. Seaborn allows me to actually pull in a data set directly into a data frame. Uh, pandas, I'm going to import as PD. So every time I write PD, I'll be accessing the pandas library. And Seaborn, I'm going to import as SNS. So every type, time I type SNS, which is only once in this case, uh, I'll be accessing the Seaborn library. So let's go ahead and load those in, or import those in. The first line, I'm going to pull in a data set called tips. Tips is a reference to uh, different meals that were spent at, I'm assuming, one restaurant where they had a certain dollar amount for the meal, a certain tip amount, whether or not the wait waiter or waitress was a male or female. Um, how big the party was, etc. So when I load that in, I'm going to load in uh, that as a D as DF or data frame, and I'm going to look at the header. The header is basically the or the head of the data. Um, that's basically the first five rows of the data. It gives you a very good idea of what the structure is, what it looks like. By default, it's five, but I could put seven if I wanted to. And I could look at the first seven. You can put one, whatever you want to put in. So I'll just leave it as blank. It gives me the first five. You see total bill, tip, sex, smoker day, time, and size. So let's say I want to select a single column. There's two ways to do that. I can either do DF and then in square brackets and in a string write the name of the column, which is lovely. You get that value right there. Um, I like the second way to do it, uh, which is saying dot, because the dot allows you to do something like this. So I can erase this and then hit tab. And tab will allow me to see the actual names of the columns. So as I go through, that's the one I want, total bill, and you can pull it in there. There are some advantages, I think, when you reassign values and things like that, you need to use um, this notation, uh, but there's certain reasons for using that. Uh, but just go by preference, whichever one works for you. Then that's going with the columns, but if you want to go with the rows, you're going to do it a little bit differently. So the columns have names attached to them. The rows have indexes attached to them. So what I need to do is do df.iloc. Iloc stands for indice location or index location or something along those lines. And then you just type in the name of the index, or excuse me, the number of the index. So if I get the first index. I get the total bill is this much. The tip was this much. Sex was a female. Not, not a smoker, it was a Sunday, it was dinner, and there were two people to the party. So very easy way to access a row in that case. But let's say you want to do a particular data point. Uh, you want to actually a specific uh, row, a specific index, and a specific column. Well, in that case, you're not going to use iloc, but loc in this case, which just means location. And then square brackets followed by the uh, row or the index and the column name. When I do that, I'll get the first row or the zeroth row, the day of that row was a Sunday. If we go up, zeroth row, day of that day was Sunday. Okay. Then you can go in and say, let's say I want multiple, I want like a subset of my data. I don't just want a single row, I want multiple. So I can get it what's called a slice. And that slice, where you can actually do square brackets and have something like this where it's zero colon two. If it starts with a zero, you can just leave the zero off. So you'll often see that. But what that's saying is give me a starting value, go to an ending value. Um, the ending value will not be included. Okay, so if you wanted actually the second row included, you'd actually use three instead of two. But let's go ahead and run this, and you'll see I get the first row and I get the second row, but that two is not included. But if I change that to a three, you'll see now it is. So you need to go one more than the one you want. Then let's say, you want to count by twos. So you don't want every row, but you want every other row. Well, in that case, there's a wonderful um, third value that goes in these square brackets where this is the starting value, zero. The ending value I can put is none. What none means is that I go to the end, but I want the end also included. 
If you do negative 1, which by convention is the ending value, you'll go up to that, but you won't include it. So you can either leave it blank or tag in none, uh, whichever one you prefer. And then the next value, do another colon and go by twos. So let's see what that looks like. And again, because I started at zero, I can leave it blank. Because I'm going to the end, I can leave it blank, and then I can go by twos. So you go zero, two, four, six, eight. There you go. You get every alternating value there. Then let's say you want to get so that that gave you slices by row, right? But let's say we want slices by column. Well, you can do that too. So in this case, you want every row. So I did a semicolon here. This just means they give me everything comma so again we're doing something similar to if we go up this row column pair right we do the row first comma and then we do the, the columns but the columns in this case i got to give the name and i got to use the colon here so when i do that you'll see i get total build tip sex and smoker but i don't get day time and size so that'll allow me to get slices by columns and then I want to select this. This is where it really becomes useful. So it, very similar to kind of Excel where, where you use like sum if or, or something like that. Um, what I want to say is give me the data frame at the location and you do the square brackets where the data frame at the total bill column is less than eight dollars. So we're going to basically say find anywhere in the data frame where this total bill is under eight dollars and print that out. And here we go. You get the indexes here. You get what values those were, and then all the other values within that. So that gives you. That's a very very powerful use of this. Um, but there's also a very simple things. So then you can say, okay, I just want to see the column names. You know, let me see the columns. You just do df .columns, and you get a list of those columns. If you want to get a single value from those columns, you're just going to access it like you would a list. So you df .columns, Give me the zero index. That's total bill, right? If I change it to one, the next one over is tip. You can also do instead of the columns, you can say, give me the values. Well, the values wind up being an array of lists. Okay, each row is every item in that row, right? Without the column names. But if you want the, let's say, a singular row, you'd access that with values at zero or values at that index. So you get that first row, right? But let's say you want this value in particular. Well, you just, just double up the square brackets and you get the, give me the values at the zeroth index at the zeroth position. That would be right here. And that gives you 1699. So this gives you kind of the basics on how to access um, data from a data frame. Uh, I think data frames are incredibly useful and the things you can do with them are, are more intuitive than a lot of other things. But this should give you a pretty good understanding on getting started on how to access the data once it's in the data frame. And if you need to see how to make the data frame, uh, we made one at the top here by just importing a data set, but you can also create them in other ways using lists or NumPy arrays or dictionaries or anything like that. Uh, hope that was useful and I'll be putting up a few more videos to do some more advanced stuff with both data frames and other libraries as well.